Hi everyone, we're gonna to talk today about muscle function. We're gonna talk about origin of search and action. We're also talk about some of this other terminology related to muscles. So you could say today we're gonna to discuss kinesiology, how basically uh, muscles move, how the body you know, incorporates all those movements, uh, analyzing basically the muscle action, okay? So we're gonna talk over here first about origin, insertion, and action. Now, generally, and we'll define these real quickly, but generally students have a lot of problems with these three right here. A lot of difficulty understanding these. So hopefully today we're gonna to shed some lot of things and make it easy. So first off, let's go over definition. We're dealing with muscles. These are all muscle terminology, okay? We're gonna talk about origin. First, what is an origin? It's basically an attachment point for muscle, okay, for a muscle, and it's the less movable attachment. Insertion is the other attachment, the other side, the other end of the attachment, uh, and it's going to be the more movable attachment. Okay, right there, there's a lot of confusion and difficulty with that. So these two would be attachment points, okay? So these are muscle attachments. Now you gotta keep in mind that sometimes with a muscle there can be multiple bones involved, uh, multiple attachments. So you could have you know, one origin or you could have sometimes two. Typically, uh, you, know, you know, one for each, but you could have three origins you know, and one insertion. It can get a little tricky, but this is the way we're gonna simplify it is, you know, it's always, you know, muscle's gonna have you know, an attachment on one end and another attachment on the other end. So this one, the origin is gonna be the less movable and insertion is gonna be the more movable. The action, of course, is always gonna be the function of the muscle, the movement the muscle carries out. That could be flexion of an elbow or flexion of a shoulder or extension of an elbow, whatever. That is, of course, always the action. The action is usually something a little bit more simple to understand. What does the muscle do movement-wise? That's usually easier to understand. Now let's talk about origin and insertion for a minute. <clears throat> the reason I think it gets difficult is of course, we've got over 600 skeletal muscles in the body. You know, your average anatomy class in college, of course, is not gonna go over all those. They're gonna go over really a, a fairly small number. But there's a lot to learn. Uh, there's a lot that students try to memorize. And initially, you do have to memorize some of the, of the attachments, but this is the thing, you have to think about it big picture. You can't just memorize every, memorize everything. You have to understand and visualize what's happening. So we're gonna use an example of a muscle real quick. We're gonna use an example of one that hopefully is easy to visualize because really it's only got one origin and one insertion in one action. So that's an easy way to start. And that's gonna be the brachialis muscle. So the brachialis, in case you don't know where that's at, it's basically deep to the biceps brachii. It would be basically under or deep again to the biceps brachii. So picture the brachialis right here under my biceps brachii. Let's talk about action for a minute. What does it do? It does the same action as the biceps brachii, so it's going to flex my elbow. So action's very straightforward. It's the only thing it does. It does one action, one movement, elbow flexion. So. How does that relate now to the origin insertion? What are the, the origin insertion? So it's basically got one uh, attachment. We're gonna go over which, which is which in a minute. But it's got one attachment, okay, which is gonna be on the anterior humerus. It's about midway down. So picture like the middle of the anterior portion of the humerus. It's got another attachment, the coronoid process of the ulna. So here we have, think about this, we're gonna simplify it a little bit. You two attachments, one on the humerus, one on the ulna. <clears throat> so the question is gonna be which one's origin and which one's insertion. Again, I can memorize all that. It's much, much easier though to think about it this way. The easiest ways to identify the insertion first, at least that's the way I like to do it. The insertion is going to be on the bone that moves the most. It's as simple as that. That's what you're looking for. One bone is always gonna move a lot more than the other bone. So let me do my action. My action is elbow flexion. So I'm flexing the elbow. There's my flexion here. Which bone is moving more? It's either the humerus or it's the ulna. Well, as you can see from my movement here, my humerus is not moving 
really at all. It's my ulna that is doing all of the movement. Okay, so clearly as I'm flexing my elbow, my ulna is doing all the movement. That means it's the more movable bone, therefore it has the more movable attachment. The ulna attachment is the insertion. So the coronoid process in the ulna becomes my insertion or the brachialis, which means my humerus attachment is the origin. So hopefully that makes sense, but that's the way you can figure out origin and insertion. Some students had a lot of trouble with that. You know, if you figure out the action, which is generally very easy, you think, okay, you know, if it flexes my elbow, I do that in the gym if I'm doing curls, right? So when I'm doing curls, my humerus doesn't move. You know, they, in fact, they tell you, hey, keep your humerus stationary, keep it tied up against the body. And what do you do? You're moving the radius and the ulna when doing curls. Okay, so ulna is going to be my insertion. Now we could um, use another example, maybe do one that's a slight bit harder, maybe has a, a multiple bony attachments. We'll use the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So right here is my sternocleidomastoid. The name's kind of easy actually because it gives you the three bony attachments. It's sternum, clido is clavicle, mastoid is mastoid process. So you know it's gonna to attach to those three bones. Sternum, clavicle, mastoid. Stern, Sternocleidomastoid. So the question is, which is origin, which is assertion? Again, you, you, even though you have three bones, you still have two ends. So one end you can clearly see is gonna be sternum and clavicle. Yes, it's two separate bones, it's two separate attachments, technically, but it's one end. So it's one end of the bone, versus the other end at the mastoid. So one of these is gonna be insertion. Well, again, I have to know the action. The action of sternocleidomastoid is to flex and contralaterally rotate. So as I flex my head, and I can just kind of make this action a little bit more gross, a little bit bigger than maybe, maybe, maybe you know, kind of, kind of like over accentuated. So I'm flexing again, and I'm rotating, right? Flexing and rotating. Well, clearly, what bone is moving the most? It's the mastoid. The mastoid process is moving the most. As I, as I flex and I rotate, I contralaterally rotate, my sternum is not moving, my clavicle is not moving, okay? Which means sternum and clavicle are the origin, mastoid process is the insertion. So here's another good rule of thumb. Hopefully you can see it with this muscle. If a bone doesn't move much, just by the nature of the bone, for instance, the sternum. The sternum is a rigid bone. It does, you know, obviously there's movement between the sternum, a little bit of movement between it and the clavicle and it and the ribs, but generally, I mean, most people know the sternum is a rigid bone. Same with the clavicle. The clavicle moves some, you know, I, I you know, flex my shoulder or I abduct my shoulder. It, it, it does move, right? I protract and retract scapulas elevate and depress the scapula, my, my scapula move or my uh, clavicle moves, but it moves very little. So in general, most of the muscles that attach to bones like the sternum, the clavicle, even the scapula, okay, those are, those are more rigid bones, less movable bones, they are generally just by virtue of attaching to those bones, they're gonna be origins almost every single time. You can say 99% of the time. And again, the bones that move more you know, uh, you know, if, it, if, it, if it's an attachment from scapula to humerus, chances are scapula is the origin, humerus is the insertion. So that's the way you want to look at it. Look at your action first. Uh, go through the movement and just ask yourself which bone moves more, which bone moves less. So hopefully you can start to dissect that a little bit. Kinesiology is one of the trickier things to do in anatomy. You know, you have to understand really the, the movement of the joint. You have to understand, of course, the muscle attachments and, and know the action. Uh, there's a lot to it, to dissecting it. Now, another thing, and this goes along with the whole kinesiology concept, is this other terminology. We want to make sure we understand this other terminology. And it is the concept of the agonist, antagonist, synergist, and fixator. So we're going to go back to easy muscle again, the brachialis, to help us understand this. So these all deal with muscle action. So we go back to the brachialis, we said the action of the muscle is to flex the elbow, 
Okay, so that's our action. So when it pertains to elbow flexion, believe it or not, the prime mover, that's another name for the agonist, the prime mover or agonist is the brachialis. So what does that mean? That means that it is the muscle that produces the most force. It is literally the muscle in charge. Okay, so when I'm flexing my elbow, a lot of people think, hey, the primary muscle is the biceps brachii. It is not. It's 50% weaker than the brachialis. Believe it or not, when I'm flexing my elbows, the main muscle in charge, the agonist, is the brachialis. Okay, so the brachialis is the agonist, and that's what that means. It's the muscle in charge. It's the muscle producing the most force. Again, 50% stronger than the biceps brachii. So then, what is the biceps brachii? Well, clearly, when I'm doing curls, most people say, hey, I'm working my biceps, which is true, but what is the biceps? The biceps is a synergist. It's a muscle that assists the agonist. It helps out. So when I'm flexing my elbow, or really when I'm moving any joint in the body, I'm not just working one muscle. Lots of muscles are working when I'm doing a particular action. And so, in this case, the biceps brachii is the assister, the helper, the synergist. <clears throat> now, what about the antagonist? The antagonist is always going to be the muscle that opposes the agonist. It is going to be the exact opposite muscle doing the exact opposite action as the agonist. So think about it. If elbow flexion is what we're analyzing, and that is done by technically the brachialis, the agonist, biceps brachii is the synergist. What's going to be my exact opposite movement? Well, my exact opposite movement has to be elbow extension. And what muscle is the prime mover of that? Well, that is the triceps brachii. So the triceps brachii would be the antagonist in this situation. Now, here's a good rule of thumb. Wherever my agonist is, you know, if I'm analyzing, in this case, elbow flexion, wherever my agonist is, the antagonist is going to typically be and we'll just say 90 some percent of the time on the opposite side of the body. So in this case, opposite side of the body, it's the triceps brachii. Hey, if I'm dealing with wrist and finger flexion, well, the agonists are gonna be these wrist and finger flexors, which are in my forearm. We call these the wrist and finger flexors. I mean, it's just a general term. What would be the antagonist? Muscles on the opposite side of the body, the wrist and finger extensors, okay? Or something really obvious too. Let's say I'm looking at the pectoralis major. Obviously, pectoralis major is right here. What would be the antagonist to that? Well, obviously, I go completely around to the opposite side of my body. That's going to be the rhomboids, which are right between the two scapulas, okay? So that's an easy way of figuring out the agonist-antagonist relationship. Now, what about fixators? Let's talk about these for just a minute. Fixator is a muscle that basically stabilizes bones, stabilizes joints, okay? So think about it. When we were here doing our curls, which again is elbow flexion, we're working our brachialis and our biceps brachii, where, you know, you're always told, hey, don't let your elbows flail out, keep your elbows tight. One of the things that also happens is your body, as you're flexing your elbow, whether you realize it or not, your scapula is trying to stay stable. Your scapula is not trying to move all around. Your scapula is trying to stay uh, adhered to the thoracic cage because there is no bony attachment of, of the scapula to the thoracic cage. It's a muscular attachment. So muscles are holding the scapula down and the, keeping the scapula from winging, keeping the scapula from moving all around. So those muscles that do that would be fixators. So in the example of the elbow flexion, what would be a good example of a fixator muscle? That would be the rhomboids. Because the rhomboids run from the thoracic vertebrae, upper thoracic vertebrae, to the scapula, the medial border of the scapula. So they will help fixate the scapula in place. Stratus anterior obviously helps with that as well. There are many other muscles, but the fixators are the ones that help hold bones in place, enabling you to do the movement better. Okay, so that's a good analysis, very basic analysis of kinesiology and how everything works. If you want more info on specific joint movements, watch our 
uh, PTA or physical therapy assistant review that we have on our channel. Uh, and there is going to be more to come on this. We also have a little video, by the way, on the uh, actual muscles of the upper and lower extremity if you just want some anatomy. We've got a video on that as well. But again, more kinesiology to come in the future. So for now, put your comments below. Good luck and good study.